Hey folks, it's Jennifer. I will go ahead and admit that one of the things that I hoard most in my craft room is wood veneer. I love wood veneer, but I never really seem to use it on cards. So I challenged myself to do something creative with it, and I came up with a couple techniques. My favorite being letterpress with wood veneer. I use the wood veneer to create this letterpress look on these cards. I've done letterpress techniques before, or faux letterpress, and nothing has ever achieved as much of an authentic letterpress look as this. It's very surprising. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. Then I'm going to show you how to take that same wood veneer, it's that large piece there, and give it a completely different look and some texture. So I'll show you that also. Finally, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a closer look at the freckled fawn kit that I used for these cards, including this cute little sunshine here. So let's go ahead and get started with the faux letter press. I have my wood veneer piece from the recent freckled fawn kit. You can use any wood veneer for this. It's originally this color. Mine's yellow on the back because I already practiced this technique. But what I'm going to do is just smush as much yellow pigment ink as I can on the back of this wood veneer. I would do this technique with pigment ink because it's a juicy ink that sits on top and doesn't get absorbed. I wouldn't try this with a dye ink. You could also use an acrylic paint for this technique if you wanted to. But I'm just going to try to put as much of this yellow pigment ink on the back of my wood veneer. Now I'm going to use my Big Shot machine with all the tabs open. This is how I normally would do an embossing folder. I have my tan embossing mat from Spellbinders. It's a nice foam mat. I have a piece of heavyweight cardstock. This is 110 pound white Nina cardstock. And I'm going to put my wood veneer ink side down onto the paper. Now I'm going to put my cutting plate back on top and run this through my Big Shot. Now depending on what um, what kind of die cut machine you have, just play around with it and change uh, the different plates and the different like different shims to see what works to press that in and look at the um, the letterpress look that you get. It presses the ink into the paper and gives you great dimension and transfers the color really well. I tried this with a few different pigment inks and it worked w well with all of them. You just want to put as much as you in as much ink onto the wood veneer as you can. Okay, now I'm going to do it again, change it up a little bit so that if, if you uh, wanted to see it in action again, I went ahead and covered again with yellow ink. This time I'm going in with some Avriel orange ink and just putting a little bit along the edges. Now yes, some of the yellow ink gets on my orange ink pad, but I'm just going to smear it off on scrap paper and nobody will ever know. So this just puts a little bit of orange ink on the outside of it. So again, cutting plate, embossing pad from Spellbinders, some heavy white cardstock. You could use watercolor paper if you wanted to. The wood veneer color side down, and then a cutting plate and run it through my machine. Now, if you don't have this embossing pad from Spellbinders, there's a few other companies that have some. You could also try Fun Foam or a piece of felt, but this embossing pad works really well. Now, you'll notice that that E there kind of pushed too far through. I'll show you how to fix that later. But look at that great letterpress look you get. So if you have small wood veneer pieces, you can try it with smaller pieces, but I just keep finding so many great wood veneer products out there. I thought this would be a great way to uh, kind of get new life out of them. So I'm going to do one more for you here. I put a little bit of that same orange on the edge, and this time I'm going in with the Morocco. Um, it's like a real vibrant orange color from Lux, and I'm going to put that ink right on the edge just to show you can get lots of different colors in this. You don't have to only use one solid color. Now again, I wouldn't try this with dye ink because the wood veneer would really just absorb the dye ink and it wouldn't work as great, but these pigment inks work really well for it. It's a great way to get more out of your pigment ink. Okay, so now I'm going to run it through one more time. I'm using my die cut machine as I would with an embossing folder and just instead using the mat, the embossing mat, and my wood veneer. So the wood veneer is just pushing so hard into that foam that it gives a letterpress look to the paper. I do want to try this also with watercolor paper. I think the texture of that would be fun too. So there we have three quick cards that I used with that wood veneer piece, and I could make a ton more. So you can see the great um, letterpress look you get when I kind of tilt this in the light here. Now, as I mentioned, some of the letters pushed a little bit too far through, like on that E there. So here's the trick I did. I just kind of pushed it down a little bit with my bone folder and kind of rubbed down any edges that were sticking up a little too much and got kind of rough. Now I have a sanding block. I'm just going to sand away the top surface of that and then use an eraser to smooth it out and nobody will ever know. And there we go. We have letterpress from wood veneer. And I'll go ahead and quickly do the same with the other, um, the other cards I did. By the way, I just trimmed these pieces down so they would fit on the front of a note card. Um, when I was creating them through the die cut machine, I wasn't really planning what I was going to do with it, so I needed to trim it down to center it up.
Now once these were done, I just put them on some top folding note cards. I have three note cards here. On the left is the Avriel yellow card stock. In the middle is Simon Says Stamp Fog. And on the right is the Surf Blue from Simon Says Stamp. So I just kept it simple. You could add so much more to these, but I thought simple was best with that letterpress technique. Okay, so now that we did the letterpress technique, I still have my wood veneer I can use on another card. So I've decided to use it on this card here and add some color and texture to it. This is also super easy. I'm going to take that same wood veneer and flip it over, and I'm going to ink up this side with that same yellow ink. Now for this, you could use any ink you want. You could use dye ink. It will color your, um, your wood veneer, but it'll kind of give it a darker color because it absorbs in so much, whereas this pigment kind of sits on top. I'm going to go ahead and add some of that orange around the edges and also some of the darker orange too, just to give it a little bit of interest. Now this is going to be wet. As before, I put it through the letterpress and I transferred that ink onto the paper. But instead, this ink is going to sit on top of this wood veneer. So we want to do something to kind of trap it in there. So I'm going to take embossing powder and put it on top. You could do regular clear embossing powder and get some shine. But I'm going to use my favorite sparkle embossing powder and put that on top. I keep my favorite embossing powders in these little containers. I think this one's going to get upgraded to the even bigger container that I keep a cl my clear and white in because I use this powder so much. Now there are many ways you could color your um, wood veneer. You could color it with Copic markers. You could paint on it. But I really like to put a clear coating of embossing powder on the top so I can make sure it's, the color's trapped on it and doesn't go away. Now when I heat set this, you'll see that it slowly starts to melt, the embossing powder does, and you get great vibrant color, and I also have that glitter texture because I used a sparkle embossing powder. It's just beautiful, and another way you can change your wood veneer. Even all those tiny little wood veneers you have, like hearts or stars, you could give them a silver embossing powder on top and turn them silver, whatever you want. It's a great way to kind of give an old embellishment a new look. I'm going to go ahead and dry the back too because there's probably some ink left over from uh, the last technique we did. And there we have a fun new look for our wood veneer. Since I kept the other cards pretty simple, I decided to add some fun to the background of this card. And I used a stencil to create that cloud background. This stencil is from Judikins and it has a variety of cloud borders that you can kind of rotate and use in different ways. Now in a few minutes I'll mention how you can get the same look if you don't have a stencil like this. I just temporarily taped my, uh, t uh, my paper to the work surface so it doesn't shift around. And I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. So I'm going to position the stencil so that I have the cloud border I want along the bottom here. I'm just going to tape this down so I don't get any ink where I don't want it on that top part of the stencil. I have my ink blending tool and my Distress Ink and Tumbled Glass is a great soft sky color. I'm starting with the blending tool on the stencil and I'm pulling it off onto the paper. And this gives you a nice defined edge without too much color so you still have some white showing through around the clouds. You can see how quick and easy that is to do. Then I'm going to peel this off and go ahead and kind of flip and rotate my stencil around until I get another border that I want to add to this. And I'll just work my way up. Now if you don't have a stencil like this one, maybe you have a cloud uh, die and you could die cut a piece of paper, lay it down and ink off the edges like I'm doing here. If you don't have a cloud die, you could just um, hand cut a cloud. So just hand cut some little puffs of a cloud and you can use that for the same technique. You can also try this with other kinds of inks, but I'll tell you the Distress Inks really work so well for blending. But you should be able to achieve similar results with other inks too. I think I'll use this stencil a lot with lots of the cute little critter and people images that are out these days. And another thing you can do with this stencil is use it upside down and you can get waves too. So stencils aren't that much money so you can kind of invest in it and use it over and over again. It's a pretty good investment. Now one of the things I like about Distress Inks is they actually stay wet for a little bit so that you can quickly add embossing powder to it and get a subtle embossed background. So this powder is just going to stick in certain parts of the background and this is again that sparkle embossing powder. I'm not going to tap much of it off because I want to kind of leave on as much as I can. Now this is going to be super subtle and in fact you won't be able to see it in the camera. But what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of that sparkle to the background. So that powder's on there. There's a lot of glitter all over it. But once I heat set this, anything that wasn't included with the embossing powder will just wipe right off. And what we're left with is just a little bit of sparkle in the background wherever there's ink. And again, this isn't going to show up in the video camera. I'm sorry about that. But in real life, you get a little bit of sparkle in the background. Not much, just a little. If you wanted more sparkle, I would go ahead and um, 
use in a pigment ink for what we did and then it would hold more of the powder. Now I put a white circle behind this so that white would show through uh, that greeting and I'm putting some adhesive on the back of my wood veneer to glue this onto a piece of teal colored cardstock. Now I just use my tape runner to do this. However, I will go back and squirt some stronger adhesive under it in a moment. Now after I glued that down, I decided I needed to change things up and wanted a white mat around it. So I just peeled it up, glued this onto white cardstock, and I'm using my long Fisker scissors, these are great for matting, to just trim a quick mat and then add it to the card. I don't know. I felt like it needed a white mat, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't think it really needed it. I don't know. Who knows? But it is just a card after all. Okay, so now that I've got that glued down, I'm going to put that stronger adhesive under it. I have my multi-medium from Ranger, and I'm just going to squirt little drops under some of the wood veneer here and there, and just that little bit will be enough to hold this in place as I put this through the mail to a friend. Now I decided to add a fun little red heart on here. This is from that freckled fawn kit that that wood veneer is also from. I love these little enamel hearts. They're just so cute. I'm going to stick this on the bottom here, and there we're done. Uh, it's a pretty quick and simple card with lots of fun techniques on it. I mentioned earlier that this wood veneer and this little heart are from a recent freckled fawn kit. Now their kits are very unique. They're not like others. They're filled with lots of great embellishments. So I thought I'd give you a peek into the recent one where this wood veneer is from. Now these kits always come in some sort of cute container. Uh, right now it's this cute little zipper, plastic zipper pouch that is incredible. Look at all the different patterns that I've collected. I use these for kids things, my daughter's bows, my son's toys, my checks and receipts. And another thing you can do with them is you can fit things in there for a card, like a stamp set will fit in there, so you can kind of plan out a card, keep it in there for when you're ready to create. These kits are filled with unique embellishments, like these wood veneer pieces. I use the one on the right there. This is perfect for project life or for card making. There's almost always a cute roll of washi tape in here. Now, there are always unique embellishments, too, that I haven't ever seen anywhere else, like these flat paper clips. I like the look of paper clips, but I don't like the awkward bulk. These are flat, and look how cute they would be to stick on a card. Also, the little heart enamel um, pieces that I showed you before. Now another thing I like about these kits is you get some unique embellishments, but you don't have to spend like $6 on a pack of a ton of them, because really we don't need a ton of them. We just need a few, like these little cork stars that are super cute. So it's a nice, um, a nice kit because you get a bunch of different things, but not too many of one thing. So this is another one of my favorite things in this kit are these cute little, there are these soft plastic little embellishments that would work for card making or for project life. Now these kits also always have a stamp set in and they're actually made by Hero Arts, so they're good quality. I thought this Rise and Shine was cute. I cut off the Rise and and just stamped Shine and then I used that little Sunshine. I layered it up with some sparkle embossing powder and I put some googly eyes on. I thought that was a quick and simple card that would be perfect to give to my daughter. So there's always some sort of cute stamp set included in it, a mini stamp set. Now also I thought that this would be cute. A lot of times the stamp set kind of goes with an embellishment that's in the kit. So like this little smiley face would work perfect in the center of that sun. I love these little star gems. There's always something cute like that. These are vellum letter stickers. So you could use those on a card or on a scrapbook page. There's also a set of chipboard shapes that would be fun for any kind of playful project. And then there's again another unique embellishment. They're like these little um, cameras that are in white and red and I think there's four in there. Quite unique, it'd be cute to stamp smile under it or thinking of you or something for a simple card. So again, I've stuffed a ton into one video, showed you how to do letterpress with wood veneer, how to change the look of wood veneer with colored ink and embossing powder, and also a peek into the freckled fawn kits. If you're interested in the products that I talk about, I always link below in my YouTube description to multiple stores and over on my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com I have much more information. And if you like the ideas I shared here, please let YouTube know by giving me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And please stop back by again for another video. Thanks so much for watching.